What a lineup we have for you on Saturday at 3 Eastern on ABC. The 26th MLS Cup features the Timbers taking on NYCFC at 8 Eastern on ESPN. It's the 87th Annual Heisman Trophy Ceremony. And our, NBA, our ABC NBA Saturday primetime lineup has Steph and the Warriors squaring off against the Sixers with Steph in pursuit of Ray Allen's record. And at 10 Eastern, UFC 269 is on ESPN Plus pay-per-view with two title fights. And welcome back to Get Up. We are coming to you live from above the Heineken River Deck at Pier 17. Got the whole team with us. Damian Woody, Diana Rossini, Bart Scott, Lewis Riddick joining us as well. So let us talk some football as we get up with you and talk about Big Ben's last stand. What the Steelers must do tonight to keep their playoff hopes alive. Plus, they are the beasts of the NFC East, or are they? That's the question we're asking about <laughs> Dallas, and our analysts are sounding the upset alarm for the Cowboys this weekend in Washington. And say what you say about Aaron Rodgers, but he does not mince words. Aaron Rodgers doubling down on his trash talk of the Bears as things get spicy for their rematch. I like a little spice. And by the way, some spice tonight on Thursday night. The showdown in Minnesota between the Steelers and the Vikings. Pittsburgh coming off that dramatic comeback win over the Ravens. Ben Roethlisberger led his 51st career game-winning drive. The Steelers need a big game tonight from Big Ben again. So, silver lining for Steelers fans. Roethlisberger is 8-4 on three days rest in his career, including three wins in a row. And Minnesota, they got to come up with some sort of answer for T.J. Watt. They got to figure that out. He had three and a half sacks last week was AFC Defensive Player of the Week, and he's on pace to break Michael Strahan's single-season sack record, one that many thought would last pretty much forever. Now, how big is this game? Look at the chance of the Steelers making the playoffs. They currently have an 18% chance to make it, according to ESPN's Football Power Index. Jumps to 32% with a road win against the Vikings tonight. Drops to 10% with a loss. This is a big one. Diana Russini, I start with you. This has all the feelings of a must-win game for the Steelers. You have been talking to players on the ground. You've been talking to people in Minnesota, and it could make Pittsburgh's goal of winning tonight a lot tougher. Oh, definitely, especially if they have Dalvin Cook back, who's been dealing Mm. with a shoulder injury. And the organization feels really optimistic that Cook will be able to go. They still want to see how he feels today. But all signs are pointing up for Dalvin to be in that. So we know Adam Thielen will be out with that ankle injury. So that's on the offensive side of the ball for Minnesota. On the defensive side, it is really good news. Patrick Peterson is back in there. He's off the COVID list. And they got their two best interior linemen, their two best linebackers, all healthy back in this. So it's obviously going to be a big challenge for the Steelers offense. Yeah, and it's going to be a big challenge for Big Ben. And and Lewis Riddick, I turn to you. You know, we talk about how big of a game this is. It's absolutely a big game for Big Ben. What do you need to see? out of him in this matchup against Minnesota? I think quick and decisive in terms of his decision making, Ryan. Getting the ball into the playmaker's hands with the quick passing game, making sure you negate that Minnesota Vikings pass rush and allow your playmakers to go to work. Look, yak per reception, total yak per game. The Minnesota Vikings are in the bottom five in the NFL defensively in terms of the amount of yardage that they're allowing after the catch. You have to turn this into a space game. You have to turn it into a game where Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool, Pat Fryermuth, these guys are able to catch and run. Najee Harris, and I think for Big Ben, look, that plays right into what his strengths are. His strengths are his experience and his ability to get the ball out of his hands quickly in order to, again, not have his offensive line get exposed and not let the Minnesota Vikings pass rush tee off. So you have to make this a space game played on the edges. Pat Frymuth has to has to own the area of the field behind the linebackers between the safeties in the play-action passing game. And if he can do that, they'll have a big, they'll have a very good shot at putting up some points and winning this football game. Yeah, and the key word there is if, Lewis, because, Bart, I look at this team, and you, you, you think about the Steelers, and sometimes you say the Steelers go as Ben Roethlisberger goes. Is that the case in this game tonight? Absolutely, man. If it was a fifth, we'll all be drunk, man. I'm looking at Big Ben, and I'm looking at how crazy it is that the Lions is going to be the determining factor in both of these teams' um, playoffs hopes. The fact that the Steelers tied the Lions, and last week Minnesota lost to the Lions. And you look at it, listen, Minnesota understands we're going to see how much Minnesota loves their coach. 
because essentially they're playing for his job. Because listen, Mike Zimmer hasn't gotten it done. Listen, Kirk Cousins has played good enough. And if I'm and, and if I'm Dalvin Cook, we'll see if he suits up. And if he suits up, it's usually for your teammates, but it's also for your head coach. Because this is a time of year where you take the guys in the back and you make them understand like varsity blues, D Wood. You get that turret all pill, you get that shot, and you strap it up because at this point it's all hands on deck. And ain't nobody healthy. So I don't want to hear no excuses about no fingers, no shoulders, no toes, no ankles. Shut up, put some tussing on it. <laughs> Put some tussing on it, like my grandma. All right, D. Wood, you look at this matchup, and, and, and I just want to, like, take it from this perspective. This is a game they have to win. Mm-hmm. If they lose tonight, do you see the Steelers as a team that makes the playoffs? I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't. I mean, because the road after this, I mean, it is really, really tough for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And for me, I, I look at the Steelers, I remember, like, people want to write off the Steelers so much. But the Steelers, to me, with Mike Tomlin, has this DNA. Mm -hmm. There's only a few organizations in the National Football League, you know, Baltimore being one. I give give you a little Baltimore (laughs) shout-out. That has that DNA about them. They They just somehow find a way. Even with everything we said about Big Ben, those guys know how to find a way to win. It's not going to be easy. We know Thursday night, you know, short week, on the road. Teams usually on the road, on the road usually don't win. But I think Mike Tomlin and company finds a way to win this game in Minnesota. Big time game for the Steelers and the Vikings for that matter because they're both still in the hunt in both the AFC and the mm-hmm. NFC. Now speaking of a big time game coming up this weekend, 8-4 and four Cowboys taking on the 6-6 six and six Washington football team this weekend. Crucial NFC East matchup between teams, frankly, that are going in different directions. So Mike McCarthy was asked about his team's remaining schedule, which includes four games within the division. Well, that's the most important stretch. I mean, it, and frankly, um, you know, we all know why the division games are laid out this way. But in my view, I, I think it's uh, it's a great course uh, for your football team to to go through. Uh, we need it as a team. We need the challenges. We need adversity. We need everything about it. I really like the way this is teed up for us. Obviously, our focus is on on this this first game and only the first game, and so we're focused on getting the nine wins, and that's all that really matters. But I love the gauntlet of this division stretch. So he loves the gauntlet. He's fired up about it. Lewis, I know you've really dug in on this Washington football team, this big matchup coming up. What's the most critical matchup you see in that game? Yeah, I think it's, the, it's in the trenches. It's the offensive line of Washington against the defensive front seven of the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, they have to be able to respond to a football team in Washington. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, right, because Dallas is the favorite. But I think Dallas needs to respond and meet the challenge that Washington is going to present in terms of the style of play that they're going to try and use. Look, this is a football team over their four-game win streak, that being Washington, that's basically two to, has a two-to-one uh, margin in terms of time of possession in their favor. And that's because they know how to go the long, hard way as far as grinding people out with the running game, making you know timely third-down conversions, whether it be by running the football, Taylor Heineke, you know, scrambling outside the pocket and making big-time throws. And they just have that growing sense of confidence that they can play against the biggest teams and the best teams in the NFL. Dallas, look, Mike McCarthy, hey, he said he wants he wants to grind. He wants to challenge. He's going to get it. He's going to get it this week. You better not overlook this football team because they play a certain way. We're going to find out. We're going to look that Washington doesn't have a whole lot to lose. And I don't say that disrespectfully because they're not expected to win this football game. But they internally believe they have the DNA to give every team a problem down the stretch. And they know they're in control of their own destiny. And that's why I think this game is a toss up. This Washington football team, to me, has yeah. does more with less than any team in the NFC East and maybe even the entire NFC. They just mm-hmm. they just seem to be able to take advantage of what they have. And, and I feel like the Cowboys are on the other end. So, yeah. guys, I want to take it in this Cowboy direction because this was a team that everybody thought would run away with this division. Like, it wasn't even going to be close. Yeah. And right now, it's anything but a runaway. Why aren't they running away with this division? This league will humble you. This league will humble you. and You can never overlook an opponent, especially one within your division. And, you know, this week the challenge is they're going against a team that can muck it up, right? You know, and, and we look at the Cowboys, all the glitz and glamour, and that's cool. But sometimes that's reflecting in how they play. Right, because there's no way if I'm going to have two horses like Zeke, I know he's banged up in Pollard, that they're only going to get 20 catches, 
uh, 20 carries. And what happens is, you, you know, coordinators fall in love with themselves and how, how smart they are, what a genius they are, and they want to show everybody how smart they are. They want to throw it all. They want to put points on the board. You have to grind it out. When this team is at its best and how you're doing the best service to this team is by running the football because it protects this defense that I think a lot of people are overvaluing. You know, you have to make sure that you run the football because it protects them. That's what, that's what, that's what Washington is doing. They're running the ball, winning the time of possession, and when you look up, you're like, damn, it's the second quarter. And if you mess up and that pressure gets to you because you're not used to being in tight games, you blink. And when you blink, you have turnovers, you have mistakes, and you find yourself losing to a team that you're superior to. See, I think that's fascinating because the passing game gets all the publicity, Woody, but he's saying it's all about the running game with this team. When the Dallas Cowboys on that six-game winning streak, they were averaging 167 rushing yards per game. That's the Dallas Cowboys identity. We talk about Dak. Yes, Dak is a fantastic player. Yes, C.D. Lamb is, is great. Amari Cooper. But when the Dallas Cowboys are at their best, they're playing in a phone booth. They are physically imposing their will up front. Why do you That's think they've when, gotten away from that? Well, I think, listen, I think, I, I think, you know, they've had some injuries up front. But I think sometimes, like Bart's talking about, these coordinators get caught up in the passing game because, they, you know, they, they, they're, they're, you they know, they're smart. They want to be a head coach. And they they want to be a head coach. They're smart. And obviously, the passing game, you tend to score more points that way. But when you talk about the identity of the Dallas Cowboys, I would never stray away from this. They are built up front to win. They have to reimpose their will on opposing teams because I tell you one thing. The Washington football team, that's what they're doing to opponents, and the Dallas Cowboys better be ready because this game is going to be played in the phone booth. Uh, and it's, it's also that time of year where uh, we know the coaches that will eventually be fired are looking at other coordinators, mm -hmm. right, to see yep. potential mm -hmm. head coaching jobs. So a lot of auditions are going down now. So, yeah, yeah that's always an element in it. Mm -hmm. But but I think Ezekiel Elliott's injury is, is, is a bigger deal than the way we were making it out to be over the last few yeah. weeks. Not having 100% right, there right. makes ride you a little nervous Collins. running the ball. I will much ride time. him like a rhinestone <laughs> cowboy. <laughs> Where do you come up with these things? Because I don't even got know what they away. ever – I never know what they mean. I spend half the time during commercial break Googling your sayings because I think you just make them up. He just dated himself. It's true. All right, well, coming up, Aaron Rodgers reminding everybody yesterday that he still owns the Bears. Wait until you hear what he had to say about Chicago. Plus, I have a question. Are we really heading towards a Belichick-Brady reunion at the Super Bowl? Mm. Just the thought. Mm. Has all of us fired up? <laughs> We're talking mm. about it next. <laughs> <laughs> It's the sound of another sale on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big business, so upstarts, startups, and established businesses alike can sell everywhere, synchronize online and in-person sales, and effortlessly stay informed. Scaling your business is a journey of endless possibility. You can reach customers online and across social networks with an ever-growing suite of channel integrations and apps, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and more. Shopify unlocks the opportunity of your business to more people every day. Every 28 seconds, an entrepreneur like you makes their first sale on Shopify. It's more than a store. Shopify grows with you. So supercharge your knowledge, your sales, and your success. This is Possibility, powered by Shopify. Go to shopify.com slash get up, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash get up right now. That's shopify.com slash get up. With no fees or minimums, banking with Capital One is the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Even easier than deciding to listen to another episode of your favorite podcast. And with no overdraft fees, is it even a decision? That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com slash bank. Capital One N.A. Member FDIC. Cancer can take away all my physical abilities. It cannot touch my mind. It cannot touch my heart and it cannot touch my soul. I want you to know that your will to live and to fight cancer can make all the difference in the world. Make a difference today for someone.
who is fighting for their tomorrow. It may not save my life. It may save my children's lives. It may save someone you love. Live. Fight like hell. Make your mess your message. Find the meaning behind whatever it is that you're going through because everybody's got something. I will never give up. And I will never give in. You beat cancer by how you live, why you live, and in the manner in which you live. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Mm, such powerful messages from such inspiring people. It's V Week at ESPN, and our partnership with the V Foundation highlights the urgent need for cancer research and the elimination of racial disparities in cancer outcomes. You can learn more and help support by visiting v.org slash donate. 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research. All right, let's run the hurry up. Diana, we'll start with you, and let's go to the Bears. Yeah, let's start with some positive news for Chicago Bears starting quarterback Justin Fields. Cracked ribs, bar you ever had a cracked rib? Uh, put some sauce on them. All right, well, he did. <laughs> he has been medically cleared after missing the last two games, so he was out at practice. He'll practice all week long as they get ready for the Monday night football showdown right here on ESPN against the Green Bay Packers. Then you have Alvin Kamara, guys. We haven't seen him out on the field for over a month. They are in a five-game losing streak. He missed four of those games for New Orleans. He's dealing with an ankle and a knee injury. He was a full participant at practice. That is a very, very good sign. We've seen Alvin out there every single week, but he hasn't been able to go full, so this is a really good sign, and he is expected to play against the New York Jets here, or at least across the river at New Jersey. And then finally, you have Joe Burrow. We all saw it up close in their game against the Chargers, that pinky finger that looked all jammed up. He tried to do everything, taping it. Uh, I'm sure taking some medicine for it, he'll figure it <laughs> out. Uh, but for Cincinnati, they're going to start Joe Burrow against the San Francisco 49ers, and really the pain management and how he handles that is something we're going to probably have to keep an eye on. But a go, uh, but all good for Joe to play in that game. Like you guys have been saying, it's that time of year you got to yeah. play through the injuries. And by the way, it's that time of the year. Ooh. New England Patriots are looking good. Let's talk about them after that remarkable win in Buffalo on Monday Night Football where they only threw the ball three times and ran it 46 times. The Patriots now sit atop the AFC. So why are we showing Bucks highlights? Because Bucks patriots is still the most likely Super Bowl matchup. Per our football power index, there is currently a 10% chance of it occurring, narrowly edging out Patriots Cardinals for the most likely Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. How can we not talk about this? Damian Woody, mm -hmm. are these two teams? Why are you smiling? Are these two Why teams on a collision course? Because he's talking about the Patriots. To me in the Super Bowl. Why am I smiling? <laughs> Your cold still work at the building. <laughs> <laughs> listen, I, I, think, I think they are, to be Ooh. honest. Yeah, I think yeah. they are. I think when you – when you look at the Patriots, what they do so well is they play complementary football, okay? And Lewis really can speak to this as well. One thing that Bill always used to preach was more teams find ways to lose games than win them. The Patriots, they don't lose games. They don't have those self-inflicting wounds. Mm -hmm. They go out there, they play smart football, defensively, offensively special teams. Find me another team in the AFC that's playing that type of football. Yeah. There's the no can, one. The there's Kansas no one. City there's Chiefs. no one out there playing that type of football. I and then, and then with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, mm -hmm. obviously, we saw it last year with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This time of year, this, at, right around this time, they started taking off. Tom Brady could make the case he's probably the MVP of the league right now. You could make yeah. make that type of case. He's playing that type of football. They're going. They're getting so, healthier on the de so on the I defensive side. Defensive side. Wait, so, hang on. Yeah. I want to get to Diana and, and, first. Uh, You're not buying it. I'm not buying it because you forgot about this guy named Aaron Rodgers suddenly and also you forgot about a guy named Patrick Mahomes all right so I, I didn't forget I, don't I didn't think forget about either point, one of them do, do I think it's possible that that this Super mm -hmm. Bowl could align yeah. it would be the best story that we've had in years in terms of getting ready for a big game yes Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. But I think the reality is the right. Kansas City Chiefs are not dead. They are back. Their offense isn't even as good as they could be, and they're winning games every single week. They have health on their side. They're a better football team top to bottom right now than the New England Patriots, which is why I think they're, they're, they're going to go to the Super Bowl. As for the NFC, yes, Tom Brady is playing the best football. He could be MVP. I still think Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers head-to-head -head will be a better team in the NFC Championship game and play in the Super Bowl. I like that little dude over there, too. I Who? think we're overlooking Kyler Murray and what the Arizona Cardinals is because they can win in sure. multiple ways. They can run the football. And sometimes we have that West Coast bias. 
And I think if it's either team, the team that I think won't hold up their end of the bargain is the mm-hmm. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Mm-hmm. You know, I just think that gauntlet is too hard. I think, you know, Green Bay is better prepared to, to, to beat them. I think if, you know, the Rams figure it out, they could beat them. Like, you know, I think the easier path is for the New England Patriots. But I wouldn't be surprised if either one of these teams could lose in the opening week. The good thing is we believe that the Patriots, well, not the good thing, the Patriots, the good thing for the Patriots is the fact yeah. that they're probably going to get that by and some good football team mm-hmm. is going to knock another good football team. And that was always the recipe. They always, because they played in the weakest division in football, they always had that first round by and they had the easier path yeah. and they had the best quarterback and which kept them healthy because you beat the hell out of each other the weekend before and then you okay. have to go up there and face them in Gillette. So you're not necessarily buying this matchup. Lewis, are you buying a patriots Bucks Super Bowl? Yeah, I could see it. I could definitely see it. And it's because... Look, I think, again, both of these teams are – they're built the right way. Um, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, their offensive line and defensive lines are two of the strongest in the NFL. Look, they have a lot of continuity on the O-line. They have big, strong, powerful backs. Leonard Fournette has really started to blossom as an all-around back. And we saw what the offensive line could do last year in crunch time when they needed them the most and how the running game could take over. On defense, look, Vita Vea, JPP, William Golston – and Dominican Sue, Shaq Barrett, Joe Tryon, those guys, look, that, that's as good of a front four or with some kind of rotation of a front four as there is in the NFL. So I think they, they, they have what it takes along with New England, and we already know how they're built. Green Bay for sure. Green Bay is not just about Aaron Rodgers throwing the ball to Devontae Adams. You see what their running game is like. You see the physicality that they can play with, which, again, is going to be a common theme for me as we move on down here through the stretch. Watch Arizona this week. Watch how they play the Rams. I like the Rams. I need to see the Rams play that physical game more so. And then over in the AFC, there's no doubt that Kansas City, their offensive line is one of the best in the NFL. They understand they're not going to be the Kansas City of old, so I wouldn't even expect it. They understand what they need to do now in order to win. So I think right now, look, it'll be them in New England that come out of it in the AFC, and I think it'll be Green Bay and Tampa in the NFC. Hmm, okay. I still imagine that matchup. Bucks Patriots. Oh, most watched game in history, I probably. Will go up in my mind. Well, coming up, <laughs> coming up, absolute chaos in the AFC North. Who wins that? Our analysts are divided on this, and we're going to talk about it next. And coming up, <coughs> Damian Woody's going to be smashing some helmets. Look out for shrapnel. Put your glasses on. Week 14 predictions coming up. But first, a little sneaky hembo time for Bart Scott. Which NFL quarterback? Owns the longest active interception streak. We're taking a little negative today. Bart Scott putting his thinking cap on. I think I'm going to take Hembo in this one. Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on car insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, Geico can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners or renters coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more. And Geico is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to Geico.com or contact your local agent today. Back with you on Get Up. A little sneaky hembo time for Bart Scott. Okay, so which NFL quarterback owns the longest active interception streak? Longest active. I feel like hembo's trolling me, man. I'm going to go, and I know Diana thinks I'm a raven, raven, but I did play for those New York Jets, and right now they're having a tough time. I'm going to go with Zach Wilson. We got to win at something. Zach Wilson, you are wrong. Guess who it is? That was what? a shocker. I, I, I never oh, saw that oh, coming. That's a good one, I never hembo. saw that wow. coming. Because Zach had a bye week. I don't think so. We're talking That's active it. interception straight. No, it's like Zach playing games. Zach interception at practice. We didn't even hear it, right? They just do it. <laughs> Tom Brady had five straight. Justin Herbert had four. And your What's boy Lamar Jackson had four. Tom is one of the most handsome men in the world. What the hell is this looking I don't know. Right we got here, a bad man. picture of Tom. I don't know. Up. We're probably going to hear about it. Very few bad Sorry, Tom. Time. Guess we ran out of pictures. Now, it's been chaos in the AFC North this season. The Steelers entered today with an 18% chance of reaching the playoffs. 
per FPI. They improved to 32% with a win over Minnesota. They fought to 10% with a loss. Now the Ravens, they play the Browns for the second time in two weeks. Cleveland is facing Baltimore in consecutive games with a bye week sandwich between their matchups. And the Bengals' chances of reaching the playoffs improved to 56% with a win over San Francisco, and it falls to 30% with a loss. Now look at this. The Steelers enter tonight third in the division ahead of the Browns, but ESPN's football power index is giving them the worst odds in the AFC North, in part because Pittsburgh has the fourth most difficult remaining schedule across the NFL. So this is just, we just got to yeah. come up straight out and ask you, who wins this thing? Who's going to win the NFC North? Woody, I'll start with you. I'm going to go with the Baltimore Ravens. I mean, as much as we talk about Offensively with Baltimore, how the passing game is all out of sorts. Mm-hmm. And Lamar Jackson basically had to go into a phone booth and put his cape on. Mm-hmm. I, I just feel I just feel like they're another team that they just figure it out. They just figure it out week to week. And I know Lamar Jackson hasn't been looking, you know, all that great. And defensively they got, you know, issues, especially on the back end. But I think just coming down the stretch with, with the record that they have, the lead that they have in the AFC North, yeah. I think they hold on to win that division. I think, lo- I think luck has been on the Ravens' side, and it's yeah. going to be running out at this point, especially with the fact that we know how many injuries they're dealing with, especially in the secondary, and we'll see how they match up against the Browns. But I've got the Bengals, and here's why. I have more confidence in the Bengals after I saw them lose against the Chargers. Mm. Their ability to get back and stay alive in that game after – looking like they were going to get destroyed in that first half. They've got the quarterback. They've got the defense. And they've got health. They they collectively just look better than the Baltimore Ravens at this point. I think they're going to make a push here in the end and win the division. Yeah, Joe Burrow's pinky's got to be okay, though, for this upcoming game. Lewis Riddick, who you got winning the AFC North? Yeah, I'm going to go with Cincinnati as well because – But I just think that Baltimore right now is just – they're losing too many people, man. I mean – as good of an organization as this is, as well coached as they are, as spectacular as Lamar is, and as, as good as some of their perimeter weaponry can be, namely Mark Andrews, look, it's just, I just think they're, they're just losing too many people on the defensive side. And I don't think you could, I don't think it's fair to continue to put that kind of responsibility on Lamar Jackson to have every play have to be a high wire act. And that's really what it's come down to now. He's the running game. He's the passing game. The protection is inconsistent. And defensively, you just don't know when they're ever going to get off the field. And Joe Burrow and the Bengals, they're not the same old Bengals, man. They can play the phone booth game. They can play the tough guy game. Mm -hmm. And they can light you up up top with explosive plays. And I think they're starting to believe that and realize that we're not the same old Bengals, man. We've beaten some good teams and we've blown some teams out in our own division. And I think they will kind of realize that and re- really have it translate to maybe winning the division here before it's all said and done. Lou, six, well, got, look, 16 20-plus okay, tw- yeah. yard touchdowns this season. Ooh. That's five more. Ooh. Five more than any other team in the NFL. So when he talks about their passing game, that's what he's talking Big about. Big plays, there. trenches, they get it done. Who you got? You guys bring up great points. But <laughs> I believe in, you say brand, the way, I believe in brand names. Blue yes. Magic, Damn General Mills, that's a brand name. Pepsi, Coca-Cola, that's a brand name. Baltimore Ravens Who is your it's pick? a brand name. I'm going with the Baltimore Ravens. You talk about the Cincinnati Bungles, Bengals, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, you can crown them. I'm not crowning them. They got to go against the 49ers. This isn't week. a that's marketing gonna campaign. Bar- that's going to bar- <laughs> <that's gonna> be barbecue <laughs> chicken. But they got to deal with that physicality in that run game. We're going to see what they're all about this week. I'm going with the Baltimore Ravens. They'll figure it out. I- They'll go to a zone blitzing team. They'll- you know what they got that nobody else has in the NFL? Justin Tucker, brand name. Do you take your kids to sit on Santa Claus's lap and just whisper into Santa, like, please bring me this wish? They got Justin, they got they got Justin Tucker wish, and they got to leave. You probably sit on the Ravens' lap. The, the, the Bengals still have Kansas City and the Browns who molly whopped them. <laughs> so you tell me. I got three L's in there serving hot L's. Don't burn yourself. <laughs> Can't wait for next Bringing week. up the kickers, even. <laughs> All right. We got to move on. <laughs> it's like, I don't even firewood. know what to do I didn't see that coming. Chop it up, D. Oh, man. Oh, we need to make that an NFT. <laughs> All right. We got some firewood. D Wood, let's get you fired up. What's got, what's got you fired up, D Wood? What's got me fired up? Man, look. We saw, what, we saw the Buffalo Bills against the New England Patriots, okay? This was a game in the elements, played in the phone booth. We, saw, we all saw that. 
And we saw New England methodically take apart that Buffalo Bills defense. Methodically. They weren't even, New England wasn't even trying, attempting to throw the ball with Mac Jones. But this wasn't the only time. We saw it with the Indianapolis Colts. Smash the ball right down their throats. We saw it against Tennessee Titans. Now, they beat the Titans, but the Titans did the same thing. We know in this league, it is a copycat league. And all the stuff we talk about with the Buffalo Bills, we talk about Josh Allen, we talk about Stephon Diggs, all of that. All that sounds nice. It looks nice. But at the end of the day, if you can't get in the phone booth and mix it up and start tossing people out the club, you will, be, you will get an early exit in the postseason. And that's the deal with the Buffalo Bills. They were in their feelings in the postgame after the Patriots went up there and just smashed them in the mouth. Okay? It's not going to change. Guess what? Every other opponent that's coming down the pike is going to do the exact same thing to the Buffalo Bills. So my thing to Buffalo is this. Strap it up. Don't nobody want to hear you crying and all that stuff, all that type of stuff. You better strap up your chin strap because every team coming up after this is going to do the exact same thing. They're going to test your will. And if you're not ready for these body blows, you're going to fold like a metal chair. So that's my <laughs> message to the Buffalo Bills. And you got the metaphor in. You think they got a shot to beat Tampa this weekend? No, I don't think they're going to beat Tampa. Mm. I don't think they're going to beat Tampa. Tampa got, listen, we talked about earlier, Tampa got, got dogs up front on both sides of the line of scrimmage. When we talk about Buffalo, that's the, that's the Achilles heel in the trenches. It don't have anything to do with the skill position. It has to do right where the game is won, right in the middle of the field. See, but Bart, I think they look at this game and they say, everybody's talking about us. We got embarrassed last week. We're going to show the world that that's not who we are. Yeah, I mean, they, listen, it's like fighting in front of your mom. You can't get knocked out. I think they're going to go back and start balling out, man. I think this is the week that they can get a win. This Tampa team isn't invincible, right? They have a lot of, you know, without Antonio Brown, Antonio Brown is what makes them special. I think the Bills go up there and they get a win because they have to. This is a must win because if they go two down, Going into the, the final stretch, they lose the division, and that would be that would be a travesty if they were the Super Bowl favorites. Yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead. I was gonna say you don't you don't think the Bucks are gonna just steal the page from what they saw but, the but Indianapolis Colts that do? Line the ain't that, physical. Patriots that line do? that line ain't that physical. Their yep. running back's not that physical. I know Fournette's yeah. like that, but he'll he'll Fournette also let, caught let that us, ball up. He, he <laughs> may, but he's still dangerous. He's they still gotta figure out a way to stop him. And right now, the word is out on this Bills defense, which is they're soft. They're soft. They haven't been tough. And they were expected to be. They were considered to be the best defense in the league just three weeks ago. Last and it's thing. all <laughs> last, falling last, apart like, like, because like, of the like, run like game. Like barbecue chicken. Mm. That's what their defense is. Well, like. You know what? I no matter, but you guys are proving it right now. This is a prove-it moment for the Bills. Mm-hmm. We will see what they were about after this weekend's game. Tip off your weekend with our next star-studded NBA Friday doubleheader. KD in the Nets taking on Trey Young and the Hawks at 7.30 Eastern. Then it's Jason Tatum and the Celtics finishing up a challenging five-game road trip in Phoenix against CP3 and the Suns. Our coverage starts with NBA Countdown at 7 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Well, coming up, he sure doesn't mince words. Aaron Rodgers doubling down on his trash talk of the Bears as things get spicy for that rematch. As long as I can remember, I wanted to be shortstop for the New York Yankees. Yankee selection is Derek Jeter. Man, I'm proud of you. Yankees win! Once you win, there's nothing else to do but to win again. Everything that came with it was not part of the dream. I don't have to be your best friend. I did it the best way I knew how. ESPN Films presents The Captain, beginning July 18th on ESPN and ESPN Plus, presented by Capital One. This week on Stephen A's World. Paul Feinbaum, my brother, talk to me about this Michigan Wolverines team. I I need to talk to you about what happens when the Cowboys win on Sunday because I'm not familiar (laughs) with how to deal with Jim Harbaugh winning games and give you fans a chance to get at me with your questions. Subscribe to ESPN Plus to tune in. 
Back with you on Get Up, and let's go to, frankly, a fascinating NFC North rematch this weekend. The Bears traveling to Green Bay to face the Packers. Now, earlier this year when these two teams met, the Packers won, and Aaron Rodgers told all of Soldier Field that he owned them. Here's Aaron Rodgers reflecting on that moment. I don't know you can uh, you can question a whole lot of what I said. You know, we've had a good record over the years against them, and been a great rivalry. I'm proud to be a part of it. We have gotten the better of them the last, uh, I don't know, 27, 28 times we've played them for the most part. But I have no regrets for saying what I said, And but I get it. At some point, that will be used against me. It is what it is. I don't, I don't regret saying it at all. I own you stuff at the end of the last game. Do you guys bring it up Saturday night? Do you use it as motivation at all? I mean, we're, we're aware of it. <laughs> and that's it. We're aware of it. Okay, because he know he know what the reality is. You know the reality is so that Rodgers is twenty two and five against the Bears, I'm and so that is not good. Oh, Look, yeah. Lewis, I, let me take it from this perspective. If you are the Bears and you are listening to that right now, what are you saying to each other? <laughs> <laughs> You're not saying a whole lot. <laughs> look, he said, look, when, when, when the opposing quarterback says, like, kind of like he tilts his head back and goes, yeah, we've gotten the better part of them for the last 27, 28 times we played them. 27, 28 times? I mean, he didn't say it two or three games. He said 27, 28 times, man. I mean, there, there's nothing you can say, right? Right. You know what? Look, man, in this league, Look, I think in this world right now, talk is cheap, bro. I mean, people talk all the time. People want to, like, sit there and try and talk loud and think that they're actually doing something, and they're not doing a damn thing. With the, the Bears, look, I know Matt Nagy as well as anybody. Yeah, he's sitting there going, yeah, I'm aware of it. What he's thinking is, and he's right, so we better <laughs> do something about it. Yep. it ain't That's what he's thinking. Can't. It's talk nothing the talk, they can walk do walk. about it. Like, I can't wait to air Rodgers come up there. Look at me. Dad, you hear me talking to you. <laughs> Look at me. I'm the captain. <laughs> I'm the captain. There's nothing you can do about it. And that's, that, listen, that is the worst feeling in the world. When you know that you can prepare, do everything you want, every trick, play, fumble, ruski, onside yeah. kick, throwback, reverse. It's nothing you can do about it. It's no Khalil Mack over there. Listen, it's their time. They're still in their window. Your window is open, closed, and it hasn't been able to be – Stay open. He knows it. The team knows it. They can do all they want. They can watch Rocky, whatever they want. That oh, yeah. little pre. We know the <laughs> night before. The night before we had that highlight tape. Yeah. It's probably gonna be all the Aaron Rodgers touchdown passes, discount double checks to piss them off. Oh, yeah. They'll go out there in the first quarter. Yeah. But it's gonna look like one of those MAC teams going against a Power Five conference where they look good in the first quarter. And they get their ass blew out in the second half. Yeah. He's gonna be laughing. But Tiny, you gotta think they would use this to motivate them. That yeah. Nagy would say, you know what? <laughs> we got you. We got right, you, what are you AR. Do? I mean, I've always felt like the Packers on this desk. And you, the Bears. So I, I'm with you. you. That one right over your head there, Bart. Um, look, here, here, here's, here's, talking to Ryan. here's something Here's something that's interesting, though, in general. I, th- I just think I've been so entertained by these older quarterbacks now yes. who are talking so much. Mm-hmm. I never saw this side I love of Tom people. Brady <laughs> and Aaron Rodgers. The, the fact that they are so comfortable putting it out there, trying to dictate – the stories that they want us to hear now. They want to. They want us to hear coming from their mouths. I think this is what's making the league so much it better is because now. Because they're so and, protected. And, 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 and exactly. We yeah, were, you can talk bad when you know can't nobody blow your sternum out. Well, <laughs> it, it's gotten to a point now. They can, <laughs> they can say whatever they want because they've got the legs. Lou, you know what that oh, red dot used to be? Lou, <laughs> you know, Lou, you know what that go. red dot used to be? You red dot to like, yeah, oh, this I know, dude ain't I know making out the right. game. Yeah. I don't but, care about no FedEx. This dude, somebody going to die right. today. But, Woody, but Woody I, I got to right. bring it back to you with the time we got left. <laughs> if you are in that Bears locker room and you're seeing this and you have pride, what are you saying to your teammates hearing that? None of that matters. I, none of it matters because, that, listen, I always found it funny when people talk about bulletin board material. That stuff don't matter mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, you got to step between the white lines and you got to play ball. And when you playing ball at Chicago yeah, you're Bears, right. got to play ball against Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers, yeah, what year. difference does it make? But, but it I, doesn't make any difference. Oh. When you got – no, you got three hours it's, going against no, a superior no, no, team. No, no, no. Like, like all, emotion can only take you so far. At some point, the better team is going to prevail. I that's lie, that, I, I that's I lie, how it's rolling. I lied one time in my life, right? 
<laughs> Mendenhall called Ray Rice and said he was going to run all over us. He didn't really say that. He was playing. But I said that, and I told Ray, and Ray broke his shoulder. Listen, you can be pissed off enough to say the hell with the X and O's and the, and the Joes and all that stuff. I would say, listen, damn, you can throw a part. You're you going to throw a touchdown pass. But, listen, I'm going to sweep the leg, Aaron. Listen, yeah, I ain't going to the playoffs, but you ain't winning no Super Bowl. I'm going to take you out. I'm going to tackle your arm <laughs> and see how hard your head bounced off the ground and see if you can remember what play you're doing. I tell you what, we'll take that extra step. Listen, we'll put a pot out. <laughs> you know, I like it ain't no FedEx pots. Like, all right, man. Every guy got to kick in. This dude want a discount double check? We're going to change him to progressive. And that's what I'm talking <laughs> Oh, my. I couldn't even hear what our producers are saying. What is happening? We got to move on. Move on is what they're saying. <laughs> we got to move on. Move on, on the clock. Perfect timing. D Wood, which team is in the most need of a win this week? Man, I'm going with the Buffalo Bills, man. After, oh. after, after that game against New England Patriots where they got demoralized and Patriots threw three, three passes total. And now you're going up against the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think the Buffalo Bills just for their psyche. Yeah. They need they need a win in the worst way right now. Yeah, Lewis, which team could surprise us and pull off an upset? Yeah, this is not going to shock anyone. But Washington, I think that's the team sitting and talking to those young men in their facility, listening to Taylor Heineke, Jonathan Allen, and talking to these guys, and listening to Ron Rivera, and talking to how this how this coaching staff believes in this football team. They're going to play their hearts out in this football game. Dallas better bring it. Dallas better bring it, and they better bring it, as Damian said, for three hours or however long it takes to finish this game because this team is going to fight until the end, and they're built the right way. They have the right mentality that they could snatch this game right away from Dallas, and I can tell you this. They wouldn't consider it a surprise. Okay, Bart, you're on the clock. Which quarterback is under the most pressure right at this minute? Matthew Stafford. Like, listen, I stood on the table for you, said you was an MVP candidate. People say you never won a, never won a playoff game. Listen, you're going against a physical team that dominated you the last time. You were brought into this division to be, make this team a Super Bowl contender. You've come up short in the last couple of weeks. you got to prove your weight and goal because they ain't got no future. You're the present and the future because they gave up everything to go all in this year for a Super Bowl. You can't get beat by the Mandalorian. Come on, man. That's disrespectful. <laughs> Not the Mandalorian. Well, baby Yoda. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Tonight, we got the 31st Annual Home Depot College Football Awards Show. It's a two hour celebration of the top performers and moments from the regular season. Our coverage begins at 7 Eastern on ESPN and the app. One app, one tap. First take coming up next. What is more likely, a Cowboys Super Bowl run or a Cowboys early exit from the playoffs? Plus, is Aaron Rodgers the most cold-blooded quarterback in the NFL? It's first take with Molly, Stephen A., and Dan Orlovsky. That's coming up. But first, D. Wood. He's yep. got the mallet in hand. Those helmets getting ready to be smashed. His predictions for this week's biggest games coming up next. Put on your glasses. You like the form? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 